Okay, so my issue that I would like to raise um, at this time is with respect to um, needs. All right? Now, I am not, and we are not, against a national ID. We see the benefit of it. There are great pros. It will fill gaps in the country. But we believe that in its current form, it poses significant issues for many Jamaicans, um, especially with the fact that there has not been, in, in my opinion, and many other Jamaicans, 60,000, I checked the petition this morning, 60,000 Jamaicans here and abroad who feel that there needs to be more consultation, ventilation of the issues, speaking about, speaking about pros and cons, all right, both of them are important to our consultative process. Um, so we're being told that we must enroll in NEEDS or in the next three years we'll be um, possibly fined a max of $100,000 and um, barred from government services and possibly private services as well, the only exception being where there's a threat to health or life or a state of national emergency. Now, I'm deeply concerned about this bill because of the impact on the country. So, um, so Charles, so you, you have given us two points in the bill that you'd like. Um, responded to. Well, I can't go into third? all of them, but just to say, right now uh -huh. I qualify for NHT. Yes. In three years, I will somehow lose my qualification. Because, I mean, somebody can respond to the NHT points, of course. You're sure about that? Well, that is my understanding because it won't be a threat to well, my this, life this is or where you, health. This is, this is where you're going to come to get all the answers. All right. right. So allow them to respond now. Thanks, Charles. Really so appreciate with, it. we have over 60,000 Jamaicans. Um, so Charles, and, uh, Charles, so you have to Thomas, allow them to oh, respond. Me? Yeah, I'm I am sorry. Thomas, sorry. I'm so sorry. My Thomas, Thomas, my apologies. Can I just I finish the, the wrong last name. two lines here? The last it's two lines. Very quick. Uh, two points or lines? Two lines. So my, my closing thought would be to allow, to withdraw the bill, mm -hmm. allow for proper ventilation of the issues over a three-month period even, town hall meetings and joint select committee where we can properly speak about the many, many issues that are in the bill. We're not against Thank the bill, you. but we are for the country of Jamaica moving forward. Thanks. Family, I saw this video from Jamaica from like um, seven years ago. This was an incident where the youth confronted the prime minister of Jamaica and spoke about issues um, that are affecting them as a country. And you know, I was so, so surprised, honestly, because such forums are not in Africa. First of all, I just want to commend the government of Jamaica for having forums where the youth can easily speak um, to their leaders. You know, the leaders they voted into the government. And um, in Africa, we rarely have um, these forums. And um, seeing Jamaica doing this is just so, so amazing. And I thought that I should react to that video and probably give you some f few insights here and there. Um, from the video, you can tell that um, the young man was not for the idea of the, um, the digital ID and all this stuff. And I came to notice one thing that is happening all over the world. The government have an agenda. They're trying to push um, for the starting of new identification systems in different countries all over the world. Let me talk about my country, Kenya. They started with this um, initiative that they wanted to move from um, the usual IDs to some, something they called Huduma Number. Then later, they noticed that that could not work. And now, recently, I hear a heard of our president um, talking about the digital ID where they put in things inside, chips inside of our bodies, you know. and. Um, I wondered what are these things, what's happening in the world? And I'm seeing this young man from Jamaica confront the Prime Minister of Jamaica in regards to issues of national identification. I was so, so happy. You notice the young man was well articulated. He spoke really, really well. And um, at some point, even um, I'd say the MC of the event tried 
to to distract the guy from giving his points they did not want to give him time because this guy was just bringing bomb after bomb like really really good points i cannot wait to hear what um, the prime minister will give as an answer to that beautiful and um very informed information from this young man you know i i really really want to know what um the president mentioned this young man says and i repeat as i quote that um in the next three years remember this was in 2017 they were told that um in the next three years they won't be able to access government services even um they, they won't access access services from the private sectors if they do not have it you know and um they probably would be given a fine of up to one hundred thousand dollars you know and um he also mentioned um the only exemption um in this issue was um a threat to life or health and i wondered why are they forcing why are they pushing for these new identification systems what are the secret you know what happened to our leaders bringing um issues to us and asking us because we are the ones who are being affected with these initiatives you know you should um try bring sensitization tell people the pros and cons of this new system you all want to push but uh, make us believe as to why you guys want the systems to change and um make us buy into the idea if we do not want to then they can never happen you know we do not want this new system that the world i'd say the world order is pushing we won't allow it you know and i'm so so happy that this young man stood and um even um was able to articulate himself in front of the prime minister of jamaica let us listen to what the prime minister answered then let us get back before we end the video and give it a critical analysis let's roll it not here to create a system that is going to deprive jamaicans of their freedom and you know what else but the bill I does am not, i am not hiding from consultation i am here facing the questions unlike most i am facing the questions and answering them and i will go to every church in jamaica i will go to every room every house and i will answer them because i am not trying to take away anybody's right and i find that this discussion is disingenuous on unfair and untruthful and i will tell you jamaica i am not going to hide from this if you say if you say that you are for jamaica and that you agree that we should have a national civil registry then let us talk as we are doing but let us talk on the facts of the situation not on the untruth and what we make up let us discuss the facts family i do not think personally that that's a proper way for a government official to answer a citizen in regards to issues affecting them you know um if you're talking about um the um uh, the issue with the identification i'd rather as a leader you convince me you tell me the pros and cons into getting these systems you know um the prime minister at some point was loud and um he was pushing for this whole notion without trying to make people to understand the importance of this you know and um i just find it off of the um, the prime minister because if an issue is tabled many a times in the parliament all over the world if a bill is tabled in the parliament and um is for the favor of the government many a times the bill passes into law that's why there was more than 60,000 Jamaicans who filed a petition against this bill you know for you to make the bill work m talk to the citizens of the country let them understand the the importance of the um national registry 
let them know why they need it rather than having to push it and um, not make sense with the aftermath of them getting this um, national registry. You notice he says the bill started being put or rather being tabled in the parliament since 2002. And um, at the time of this video, that was 2017. You can notice there is something that is off already with the timing. Why would a bill be tabled by different governments since 2002 to 2017? It shows there is an issue with this um, bill right here. And um, I'm so happy that the citizens of Jamaica are standing and um, being still with their decisions in matters affecting them. That's why they, they are even petitions, you know, and I'm so, so happy for Jamaicans. I am so, so happy that you all get an opportunity to question a whole prime minister in a forum where youths do that. Here in Africa, it's so, so rare. We are not given these opportunities. And this is just a call up that the government officials in Africa, it's high time that you give um, the youth of Africa the chance to articulate their issues on the, uh, how do I put it, the biggest platform in the country. Talk to your prime minister. Be able to talk to your president. Be able to table your grievances. Be able to keep the government accountable. The government told us that they'll be doing this, they have not done, let us talk to them directly, you know. And um, this, this is just one thing that I want to comment so, so much about Jamaica. Before we end this video, let us listen to what this other young man had to say before this video ends. Let's listen in. Okay, good night everyone. Um, my name is Glendon Martin. I am a student of the University of Technology. And I had a question, but the president had, uh, had a similar question, so I'll allow him to ask the question. But what I have to say, well, I have a comment, actually. The gentleman that asked the question on NIDS, um, Mr. Prime Minister, I was taken aback by the way you responded to the question. I felt that you came across too strong, and it, 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 when I was listening to you, while I was listening to you, I was well done, saying, everybody. should I go and ask this gentleman a question? Will he answer me in the same tone that he answered the young man. And I, what I want to, to say and what I want to see in Jamaica or overall with politics is that our politicians behave sometimes, even in parliament, when you see them jumping over, arguing with each other. Our young people are looking at this and they're saying this is something that is right because the politicians, the leaders of our country, this is something that they do. So, Mr. Prime Minister, I would like for you to, first of all, apologize on the way you responded to the question. And secondly, allow me to finish, please. Allow me to finish, please. So, As so, of so, country, so, my, my, my darling, hang on one second. Sir, sir, hold on, everybody, everybody, everybody. One second, one second. You know, the, the, the great thing about youth, hold on, the great thing about youth is that we see no boundaries at all, none at all. I think that you possibly could think hard on your comment and suggestion, really, in terms of the implications. I understand yes, your feeling, but allow the Prime Minister to respond, though. Just... Now this is what I'm talking about, guys. A generation of young men and women who are intelligent, young men and women who are able to put their government into accountability in regards to each and everything they're doing. This young man tells the Prime Minister of Jamaica that um, he needs to apologize for um, answering the other youth um, with a bad tone. You know, and um, people who are not happy about it. This kid also continues to mention that even in the um, Jamaican parliament, some, sometimes um, the members of parliament act in a way that is improper. And um, the youth feel that 
um, they, they just embrace what is happening in the parliament and think that that's the right way to do things and asks the prime minister to answer the questions without being rude in any way. He asks a whole prime minister to apologize and um, answer the questions in the tone that he was asked the questions with. Because in a way, the prime minister was a little bit high and even forgot to answer the questions appropriately because they need to know why the government is pushing for the national registry. You know, they need to be convinced. But the prime minister did not do that. And I want to commend this young man for what he did right there because that rarely happens. Especially here in Africa, that rarely, rarely happens. I just want to commend um, what is happening right there because, yo, a young man telling a whole prime minister to apologize and answer the questions very, very well. You know why this is happening in Jamaica? Because people are believing that um, they are the one who voted their leaders in. Their leaders have to be accountable. I really wish that people from all over the world could embrace such things. People all over the world with um, different governments should um, be interactive with the people of the country, should give the youth platforms to talk about issues that are affecting them. And um, this is just an eye-opener to all people outside there that it is possible for us to talk directly with our government officials and ensure they are accountable, ensure that they do things in the rightful way. So guys, I really, really loved this video and thought that um, I should share it with you guys because this is the way we want to see. This is the change we want in this world. So to Jamaicans, that was so, so nice. In as much as at some point um, the youth were being um, forced to stop um, articulating the issues because in a way um, they made the prime minister look bad of which it could be true because they are not they are not able to explain themselves they are not able to articulate their issues well so um, this is just a thing that i commend and i am happy about and i hope you guys learned a lot from this video so guys thank you so so much for the love and support thank you for choosing to roll um, this clip from Evans Raiola's channel. I do not take it for granted. Kindly subscribe, share it with your friends, like the video so as it can be recommended to other people. You can as well join to be a member of my channel. And um, if you want to support my channel, you can support me through Super Thanks down below. Let us roll and um, let us keep supporting each other. And that we are the change. The youth are the leaders of tomorrow. Let us use our platforms to enlighten other people. Let us use our voice because um, growing up, we were told that we are the leaders of tomorrow. Tomorrow has already reached. It's high time that we stand for ourselves. Goodbye for now, guys. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.